OK, so let's open the file we prepared with Illustrator. My job, as you may know if you've seen other courses of mine, is mostly working with straight lines that create perfect vertexes. To make these lines, I usually work with the pen tool. This tool is to create lines or shapes. The pen tool has its shortcut with P. If we click with it on two different points without dragging, we're going to create a straight line. If we keep on clicking in the same way, we're going to create more vertexes. With the pen tool, we can also create curves. We would just have to click and drag to define the inclination and the direction our curve is going to have. To edit the curve or the anchor point, we can just use uh, the direct selection tool with the keyboard shortcut A. With this on, we can choose what we want to modify. In the pen tool, we have the add anchor point tool. This is for adding anchor points in the middle of our line and the tool that we can use to eliminate anchor points. We can also find the anchor point tool. This is a little bit more complicated to use, but I use it to curve straight lines. A tool that's relatively new to Illustrator is the round vertexes tool. I'm going to draw a star to show you how it works. If we have any shapes with vertexes that end in a point, we can use the direct selection tool Look on the vertex that we want to round. OK. And we're going to see that we get a point in this vertex. If we stretch it, we're going to see how our vertex in point is going to become a perfectly curved vertex. Also, we're going to be able to see that we get live corners option. If we go into this option, we're going to be able to choose the kind of vertex we want, the radial distance, and the rounding that we want. Another option that's basic for me and my work is the line option. As I've said, my designs are normally quite linear. If we select a stroke that has a line, we can see as well in this bar the line option. In this option, we can choose how thick we want our line to be. Another option we have is the finalization of the line. Straight, pro straight projected, or curved. We also have these same options in the vertexes that end in points. If we choose a closed stroke, we can select where the stroke is going to be in our figure. In, out, or in the middle. Also, we can choose if our line is going to have any dashes. The distance of these dashes and the space between each dash. We can also choose whether we want an arrowhead and the direction our line is going in. We can select the scale of the arrowhead as well, in this option. Just underneath, we have this other option that allows us to choose where we're going to place the end of the arrow. As you can see, to work on linear things with the pen tool, we have a lot of modifiable options like with most of Illustrator's tools. 
If we know our tools well, we can use our time much better when we're working. So next, we're going to be looking at some tricks to save time while working with Illustrator. First, we're going to create a new artboard, a square, where we're going to be testing things out. The first trick we're going to be working with is the simplest one. It's just a question of copying and pasting. As we all know, the commands that we use here are Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste. However, when we paste, if we hit Ctrl F, we're going to be pasting on top of the copied object in the exact same place. If we choose the option Ctrl B, we're going to be pasting in the same place right underneath the copied object. If we copy an object, keeping the artboard selected, and we paste it with one of these shortcuts on another artboard, it's going to be pasted in the exact same place on the other artboard. Another option that might save us some time is the transport option. We have to select an object, and while we move it, we have to hold the Alt key. This is going to create an identical copy where we drop our work. If while we're doing this, we keep shift held, we're going to be placing it at an exact 45 degree angle. Once we've placed these copies, we can align them and then distribute them so that they have the same distance between each other. This is done by pressing all of the copies and going to the align tool. In this tool, we're going to see that there's a number of options. The first one we have to keep in mind is to align to the artboard or to our selected elements. If we choose the artboard, it's going to distribute our copies using our artboard as a reference. If we choose to align to the bottom, it's going to align them to the bottom of the artboard. If we choose the option to align to the selection, it's going to align everything to the selected elements. This way, if we choose the option to distribute to the bottom, it's going to do this to the object that is the lowest. If we choose the option to align to a key object, it's going to use the key object as a reference. You can select this by pressing on the key object with Alt and then after selecting all of the elements. The align options are to the right, to the center, and to the left regarding the axis. The distribution options have the vertical and horizontal axis of the document as references, but also the part of the object that it takes as reference. We're going to be able to see this with objects in different sizes. Lastly, we're also going to be able to distribute our objects with the same distance between each other. The next thing we're going to look at is the Blend tool. This allows us to blend objects within Illustrator. To do this, we can use the icon in the toolbar, or we can select both the objects we want to blend and go to Object Blend. As we can see, this tool, what it does 
is make figures between both that we've chosen. If we go to the blend options, we're going to be able to see various options. We're interested in the following ones. Sp specified steps. This is to choose the number of figures we want to have between both the objects we chose. If we choose a lot, for example, we can use them as a projected shadow. These things are seen a lot in flat design. Specify distance. This is to choose the distance between the in-between copies. If we look at the orientation, this is to align this to the page. It orients the blend perpendicular to the horizontal axis of the page. Or we could align it perpendicular to the stroke. Blending is useful for if you wanted to make a projected shadow or to stroke on various objects through a guideline. We could do this in the following way. Blend the objects. You can blend them more, but I want to make this as easy as possible. Now, the guideline that we made with the anchor point creation tool, we're going to transform it into a curve. We can see that the blend is repeated throughout the curve. If I go to the blend options and I choose to align this with the stroke, I can see how the object repeats itself, changing its orientation. Other options we might see with the blend options is that we can change the object that comes out on top. And an option that I like quite a lot is that we can replace a line that is kind of the spine within the blended objects. We just have to place the new spine on top of the blended objects and we can choose the replace spine option in the blend options. Lastly, when we have our objects blended and stuff, and we don't want to modify anything, we can expand the shape, or if we want to start again from scratch or eliminate the blend, we can release the blend. Another one of the tools that I'm going to explain is the Shaper tool. This tool is relatively new in Illustrator and it lets us create shapes or eliminate parts of a shape. So that you can understand how it works, we're going to work on this circle with black lining and transparent fill. 
as we've explained before, we're going to blend with a copy of the same shape. The objective is that we get various parts of the circles that are overlapping with the one next to it. When we have this blend done, we're going to expand it. Let's select the shaper tool and we're going to just doodle over it the parts we want to erase in the overlapping parts. We're going to see how those lines disappear. If we keep the shaper tool selected and we press on this arrow, we can modify the objects independently. One of the uses of this tool is, for example, eliminating parts of the lines that are left over. Another use is, for example, if we draw a triangle by hand or with the mouse, this tool will automatically correct it into an exact triangle that's completely editable. We can do this with many other geometric tool shapes. I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye.